Welcome back, everybody, to Panoi Crossover. Ooh, my favorite topic, what's happening right now in the series, the matchups. Let's talk about it, Marky Mark. All right. Let's go. I want to compare the two, uh, the two series so far because it's been, uh, before this airs out, the series right now for both, oh, well, tied 2-2 and against the Warriors and, and Houston and Boston's leading 3-2 right now. Mm -hmm. For you guys, I don't know how many games have you guys seen so far, which has been the better series for you? Mm -hmm. Has it been the Western Conference or has it been the Eastern Conference well, uh, Finals? I think with the Eastern Conference Finals, there's been too many blowouts. Mm -hmm. um, you see Boston winning games by a big margin at home. You see Cleveland winning games a big margin at home. With the Western Conference, it's it was projected as our actual NBA Finals between Golden State and Houston Rockets. And it kind of is. I mean, it's close. We got close games. We got games stealing on the road when Golden State won the first game on, at Houston in Game 1. And then we got uh, Houston Rockets stealing, technically stealing a game in Game 4. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in a... A, fat, a good fashion way. Um, I mean, they, they've been playing so well. I think the matchups have been looking good. It's just a lot of interesting points, and, and it's getting a lot of physical too, right? You know, we got Houston Rockets trying to find a uh, switch on Stephen Curry, trying to go one on one on mm -hmm. him, and trying to you know rough him up a little bit. And then you got the shooting threes, man. The the, the, the shooting touch of Kevin Durant, uh, Clay Thompson, and Stephen Curry. I mean, who wouldn't want to enjoy watching a team like that? I agree with that. Uh, just watching Houston and Golden State play, there's, there's moments where they're just ba back and forth, back and forth, and they're making, making, making. It's just so fun to watch compared to uh, the other series where there's, it's just more, more ball movement and the, and the, like there's more dynamic play. Like when I watch Cavs, like the the past game that happened. LeBron, I saw, I saw a lot of times they're standing still looking for the ISO, looking for ISO for Kevin, Lo Kevin Love, looking for ISO for LeBron. But when you're looking at Golden State and Houston, so fast-paced, pulling the trigger, very physical. It's so fun to watch. Uh, and then, you, like you said, they steal games on the road. They stole one, mm -hmm. one, each team stole one game on the road, and now it's coming down to it. So I feel like if that was the championship, if that was for... The whole thing, I'd be happy and just, that's it. I'm good yeah. with that, that, those two teams. But unfortunately, whoever wins from, you know, the Western side, I'm not, I'm not sure it's going to be a good finals. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting it out, out there. Add just one more point. If, yeah. if, if Boston's whole team and Cleveland's whole team mm. would be consistent throughout, I think it would be more enjoyable to watch because right now it's like LeBron versus Boston and yeah. Boston versus everyone, everyone else on the Cavs team. I mean, it's, just, it's, just, it's, not, it's not interesting right now. It's LeBron, he's just carrying everyone else. Yeah. I mean, J.R. Smith only scored like, what, single digit points last game. Um, and Kevin Love only scored like only in, his, in the teens. Mm -hmm. And LeBron only scored 20, 20 plus points. So, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not that interesting. But I'm, gonna, I'm still watching, though, see what happens with the yeah. Boston series. And also yeah. the debate of, like, LeBron. Oh, if, why can't LeBron carry it? The GOAT conversation keeps on coming up now. And that's because, exactly yeah. why, I, you know, as much as big of a Warriors fan I am, I know mm -hmm. uh, I'm rooting for them to win it. I actually have been enjoying the Boston and Cleveland in a sense of the narrative that there is, the, the narrative of the whole series in general, just the fact that LeBron has been able, uh, has been able to carry the Cavs team first, second round of the playoffs. And here he is basically doing the same thing, but it's just a great narrative. It's a good story. And it's everyone's really buying into the story of LeBron trying to carry this whole team mm -hmm. and everyone trying to compare whether this is actually the worst team he's ever carried into the finals. <laughs> yeah. right. Compared is, to the 2000, 2006, 2007, uh, Cavs in that he took where they had like what yeah. Larry Uge, the yeah. Junis, Drew Gooden, yeah, yeah. bunch of scrubs. So this is <laughs> this is a great story for me that I've yeah. been enjoying this. Like, is can he really carry it? Is it a good story or is it good basketball it's, to it's watch? It's a good though. narrative story. But yeah. the fact that um, Boston is playing, um, there's another narrative on Boston side. This team wasn't supposed to go anywhere because of the yep. fact that they mm -hmm. lost Gordon Hayward. This was supposed to be a season for them to just get to know each other, develop, because they're built for long term. And then all of a sudden they lost Carey before the playoffs even started. And so basically it's a lost season again. Like it's not just a development, but it's another thing for the playoffs. And here they are in the conference finals, trying to see if they can go to the finals. That's another narrative coming in. Can Brad Stevens make the most out of what he's got? And he's showing that he can. And then the fact that there's show, they have a bunch of players that are playing once again with each other, for each other, and they'll have different players that are showing up here and then. Rozier out of nowhere, and then Jalen Brown, and then 
Al Horford in the first two games, and then now Jason Tatum is showing up. So I, I think this is more of like you don't know what you're gonna get, as opposed to the Warriors. You know that yeah. uh, Warriors and and Houston series. You know that you're gonna get Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. You're gonna get a bunch of uh, stuff from Clay, both ends in the floor, and then you're gonna get some angry Draymond, some questionable things, and you're gonna have Harden and Chris Beathy. We're here. You don't know what you're gonna get. This is so unpredictable when you're watching the game. You don't know. If the Cavs are going to get blown up, you don't know if the Boston's going to get blown up because everybody thought it was going to be a sweep after Boston won two games in a row. But mm-hmm. Cleveland came out of nowhere and then won two games. In, uh, and then game five games in, LeBron looked tired. Is this the end of it? Yeah. So it's, it's more up and down. It kind of gives you that, oh, what are you going to expect in this game? Whereas the Warriors and, and Houston game, I've watched it, all of them, but um, it's been great. But Houston's doing the same thing. They do a lot of pick and rolls. Just to get Curry on Harden or CP3, and it's just like it's getting boring. And like they do the same strategy every single game, where they every time Curry's in, pick and roll, try to get Curry on uh, Harden or CP3, and then they let them dance one on one. And whereas with Boston and Cleveland, it's more like how do you stop LeBron? <laughs> All right. That's true, and I also the the emergence of Tatum as well. Mm-hmm. Like when I was watching the the past game, I'm I'm on LeBron's side because I want to ride LeBron and say like this guy's a freak, this guy's next level. Same. But but it's so it, it's so it's so frustrating to see Boston be such a such a more you know composed team than <laughs> Cleveland and a much younger team yeah. to be this composed compared to a team that's a veteran better, uh, that has a, the best player in the yeah. league, the best player in the series, and everyone basically have playoff experience. Kevin Love. Kyle Korver, J.R. Smith, George Hill. These are players with playoff experience, mm-hmm. but they look more rattled as opposed to a team that has little to no playoff experience except mm-hmm. Hal Horford. They're being, they're being beat by kids, man. Yeah. They're being beat by kids. I mean, I think but you can't doubt LeBron. I know he looked tired in game five. I do think they might push it to game seven. I know it's I probably, said, seven. probably right. said last week, uh, game six, Cleveland. But I mean, look from what the series looks like now, even for the Houston Rockets and Warriors t- uh, series, I think both series will go to game seven. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna, just going to be a really interesting end towards the uh, NBA playoffs. And it's going to be really exciting to see if we will see a rematch of Warriors versus Cleveland or we'll see some new emerging teams to face on the Warriors mm-hmm. or if the Warriors will get yeah. knocked out. I'm, I'm not sure actually about the Houston game. I think if, if Golden State steals a game tonight, I think. Houston would lose in game six. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can win again in Oracle. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Golden State is going to let them win in Oracle because they had so many chances in that game four. So many chances to, to win the game back or to tie the game again. And they just missed some open shots, open layups, open dunk by Draymond, open layup by Steph. And he was open on that three to tie the game too. So I don't think they just can win. If down. they steal a game on Houston, which I think they will because they want to get revenge in that, uh, that game four, I think. I think it's going over game six. By the time this episode comes out, we'll probably know what happens. So yeah. maybe we'll, your, your prediction will be right. Yeah. Hey, and if Boston moves on, two people will be laughing at LeBron, Al Horford, because I didn't know Al Horford's been getting yep. beat by LeBron all the time. Won. And then Hasn't Kyrie won. being on the sidelines laughing and yeah. saying, I'm not on your team anymore. Thank <laughs> goodness. <laughs> all right. But hey, thank goodness the, this whole episode is over now. Anything you'd like to say before we leave? I just want to say thanks to our fans. Keep watching. Keep commenting. Keep you know following us. And we got you. We're watching all the stuff you're doing. Shout out to all the people that follow us, the little kids that say hi to us, that follow our content. You guys are awesome. You guys you know, are what keeps us doing what we're doing right now. And JR? Yeah, don't forget to follow us on App and Cross for all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And we're on YouTube as well. If you want to check out full, re- full highlights of our show, past episodes, past seasons, check Th- it out. That is right. Thank you guys for joining us once again. And hey, keep working on your game. Keep sending us some love. Make sure you check JR's documentary because Filipino basketball is on the rise. And then Filipino basketball is here to stay and to showcase on our ends. Hey, guys, stay balling. <laughs>